And on a Sunday, my ticket is a one way. I'm about to play in the sky. I always knew you'd make it one day. Today was such a fun day. Yeah, 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 Wazzy Circus Radio. Welcome back, guys. Uh, this is a show where I sit down with some of the most amazing people that I've met in over a decade of professional skydiving. Nailed it. All right, my guest today is a skydive legend who has flown all over the world. He's part of the Everest team. Um, he's an entrepreneur who owns a small business, a small business with airplanes, parachutes, jackass staff, <laughs> <laughs> Crazy students, man. A DZO. One of the toughest jobs I think there is to have. And he runs the funnest Central Texas Skydive Center there is. My guest today, the legendary Joe Johnson. What up, baby? Hey, Waz. How Thanks are for you, having me. Yo, so we were just talking about some Boche Nepal, right? Yeah. So Everest team, you're jumping over fucking Everest, or is it on the side of it? I mean, you don't go above Everest. Uh, we're jumping from anywhere from twenty to twenty four thousand feet. And where's the landing out, area? Out in front. So we're operating on a Simboche Nepal, which is at twelve thousand foot elevation. Twelve thousand foot 12, elevation. 000, yeah. And going up to twenty so it's basically a, a normal length skydive. Right. But we're landing tandems at twelve thousand foot elevation. So that it's coming in hot. It's it's fun. It's, <laughs> it's fun. Are you landing on the glacier? No, uh, there's other a, glaciers. I've never Simboche is the uh, last landing strip. Uh, okay, on, on the way to Nepal, you know Everest, so uh, we use the landing strip there. Wow, and it's fucking freezing. Obviously, I've seen the gear on on the photos. Uh, you guys have full mask. You're not using oxygen on the because you need oxygen during the fall because you're so high, huh? Yeah, so we're using yeah. Full... So under canopy, you're still above fifteen fucking grand. Yeah, so full bailout. <sighs> Oxygen systems. And for the tandems also. And for the tandems also. And for the yeah. cameraman. Everybody. Wow. Yeah. And it's a chopper. Using a Eurocopter B3. Yeah. Why, why a chopper not like a Beaver or a... Uh, they don't let single-engine airplanes into Simboche anymore, so just helicopters. Why is that? Do you know? Uh, too many crashes. Oh, really? Yeah. Are the winds just fucking outrageous? Winds, clouds, weather. Yeah, it's... uh. That's why uh, it's one week. Yeah. Out of the year, you could do it for one week. Yo, people are paying fifty grand. Well, they were. They're they're making it cheaper now here, but fifty grand to go skydive in Nepal. That's pretty rad. Yeah. When they first started, uh, they the original guy that started up was charging fifty mm -hmm. thousand. And who was that? Do you remember who that was? I don't know. That was well before my time. Okay. Tom Noonan. Uh, Noonan. Shout out to Noonan. Uh, uh kind of took over, spearheaded after. Uh, a bunch of stuff happened. Okay. The guy kind of collected a bunch of money, bailed on paying everybody mm. out, and then uh, shit happens in the skydive world. They shut it down for a year, and then uh, Wendy from New Zealand and him got together and started back up, and they, you know, so they've been going ever since. I think this is, I think this is nine or ten years for Tom now. Oh man, congratulations! So, yeah. so is it Cyprus? What, what do they use for the ads? Cyprus. Not vigil. Not vigil. Why not? I don't know. Okay. Right, they're tested. It says Cyprus has been tested everywhere. So, I, I mean, that's what I jump. Shout out to uh, Cyprus. And that's real talk. Um, what are the dangers of gear freeze? Is there, like, is there too much moisture in the canopy? I don't know, no. man. I'm just trying to imagine this hellish cold landscape, you know? Yeah, I mean, no, there's, I mean, it's not as cold as you think. And, yeah. you know, as long as everything's dry, you know. Right. Okay, as long as your yeah. gear's dry, it's right, right. If you had wet gear and packed it up and brought it up there, it might be a problem. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't know, man. Yeah. Neither, I mean, really, neither do I. You know? <laughs> right. Give me right. a rig and tell me to jump, and I will. Yeah, I, it's me too. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my mentor, Jack, called it diving for dollars, man. Like, you're going right. to gonna eat? You got to jump, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So base camp, you're there how long? Well, so Tom, when you know he started, he invites so many people or whatever, who's ever interested. And it starts out with the trek from Lukla to base camp, and then along the way, they stop in Simboche. Trek, like you guys trek. are hiking? Yeah, and then it's stop How in much? Simboche. How long? Uh, I, think it, I think total, it's 76 miles in and out. 
hiking. So 30 some in, 30 some back, but it's some of the most beautiful. I'm sure it's breathtaking, but are oh. you here carrying your own rigs and shit? No. So the gear goes in on Sherpas. Oh, okay. I'm about to say. And, uh, Y'all yeah, but... better not complain about bringing your rig in from the landing area, <laughs> son. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, we fly commercial into Kathmandu, and then we take a puddle jumper uh, from Kathmandu into Lukla which is uh, one of the most dangerous airports in the world. It's at a 40-degree 40 de- 40 incline, and, I mean, it's amazing. And the end of the runway is a hotel. <laughs> On the end of the runway, facing the, oh, shit. Yeah, so one side cliff, the other side hotel. Right it's on. beautiful. Uh, Sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah, probably the pinnacle of my career, f- oh, for sure. Kathmandu so. is in what country? Nepal. It's in Nepal. Nepal's yeah. its own country. Yeah, Nepal's its okay. own country. Doesn't it touch Pakistan or Afghanistan? It touches China. China. And India. And India. I believe. Nepal. I'm not, I'm not good at world. Uh, That's where the monks are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you see uh, any monasteries? Yes, we get blessed by the monks and we got to you see been monasteries. Blessed by the monks? Yeah, they do a, um, uh, what's it called? A, a, a puja, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get yelled at for that. No, it's all uh, good. We, we're, we're idiots. But, the world uh, knows we're idiots. It's cool. But so the monks bless us. Obviously, um, the mountains are gods to them. So okay. to to climb them, you have to be blessed. Okay. To, to you know, use the mountain, you have to be blessed before you do it um, to get their blessing. Wow. So, um, so with the chanting and like. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it's amazing. You know, it's just. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole. I mean, it can't. Even, I can't even describe it. Really, you know? it's like and a ceremony. It's not like it's, it's, a, it's a full like on a ceremony. You know? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a full on ceremony. It lasts probably 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, a lot of rice thrown over the shoulders, and you know, I mean, it's it, it's a it's a way of life or culture that is probably the most peaceful mm-hmm. and beautiful. I mean, the people there are just amazing. So they accepted you well. Yeah. Yeah, they they welcome us well every time. Um, yeah, I mean it's just re- never been so well received anywhere in the world. Wow! And to have a ceremony with monks in that backdrop, you had to feel just electric. Yeah, I yeah. mean you feel like this big peon, you know? huh? Yeah, I guess you know, so. In, in that valley, making right. that trek, I mean it's those mountains. You know, Amadablam, Mount Everest. I mean. Ama Deblon is my favorite, and that's the mother of the valley. She's got her outreaching arms protecting everybody and uh, or protecting the valley, and it, it's just so beautiful, and yet you feel that small, this big. I mean, it's... What an honor. Yeah, and the kids there are beautiful. Um, my favorite picture of all time and favorite experience of all time was we were coming down the first year I was there. We were coming down from Simboche, and... We stopped about halfway down. It takes from uh, Namche Bazaar to Simboche. It's about a 45-minute hike up the stairs. Mm. So it takes you about an hour to get up there. And then so we were resting halfway down, and the kids are getting out of school. They're all wearing their uniforms. Right, right. And you can probably see the picture. I mean, you've yeah, seen the picture. I've in the seen office. the pictures yeah. hanging in the office, yeah. So... The kids I, rubbing your bald head. I, in. <laughs> I, I'm gonna show them my tattoos. Yep. You know, I I think you know they probably think my tattoos are cool. So I'm pulling up my sleeves. You know, uh-huh. gonna show them my tattoos, high fiving them, and I'm getting hot. You know, wearing all black and take my hat off to cool off a little bit. And right. they see that I'm bald, and I had like 30 kids just swarm me to to rub my head. You know, it right? Was, well, look at their faces. Yeah. Why? I, what is? <laughs> What, why, do you know why? Aren't the monks bald? Well, Buddha's bald. Right. And you, th- they don't see bald people. They're all thick, black, I'm sure. head of hair, you know? So yeah. between everything, you know, I mean, I That was know. it, huh? That was but a cat. Whatever it was, I don't know what it was, but, you know, it was, I mean, that, that smile is, you know, priceless. You yeah, know? yeah. What's the so, book, Little Princess? Uh, that was... Uh, Recommended reading for me uh, with one of the guys that was on the trek with me. It's about a uh, uh, guy. I think he's from Boston or from out east somewhere. He uh, started, went on a mission to reunite the lost children of Nepal with their families during the Civil War. The rebels came in and collected all, hey, we're going to keep your kids safe. And 
they took them, used them for trafficking, or oh, and, fuck. or they just left them, you know, to fend for themselves on the streets of Kathmandu. Uh, so he wow. took it upon himself to start trying to reunite and bring these home. kids to their, you know, rightful parents and and in the villages in Nepal. So it's a it's a really good read. And what's the name of that author right there? Uh, I can't. Can you bring it back up? I'll see if I can see it. I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Connor Greenan, Little Princess. Yeah. Wow. Man, what an amazing part of the world. Yeah. Every village, every little village that we walked through along the way to base camp, babies, you hear babies cry just because that's what they do, you know, but mm-hmm. you never hear, nobody was fighting, nobody was yelling, nobody was, is wow. everybody was just happy, you know, the kids were playing, kicking a ball, peeing on a dog, you know, whatever, yeah, what perfect. kids do, Dogs, you know? yeah, kids. everybody was so happy, The you know, the young teenage girls talking on their phone to their boyfriends that, you know, are Sherpas or, or guides along the way, and, and, and just amazing experience. And you had Sherpas with you? Yeah, we had animal, you know, we had some animals carrying our stuff in and, and Sherpas as well carrying a lot of the gear those and then our are, guides. Those are the real mountain climbers. Oh, right? Jesus. Yeah, we're just tourists in their world. Right? Stack three or four bags, you know, on themselves and just... Just go for it. It's amazing that, I mean, just they make everybody that I've ever seen look, you know, right. weak. And and I don't it, like it, walking it, with the mailbox, son. So, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> they got me, man. Yeah, it's. So, yeah, I don't know how they do it. Well, why don't you? Why don't you do it anymore? You just moved on to your own disease, or the third year I was going to go, I ended up having back surgery, mm. so I couldn't go then. And then the some personal stuff came yeah. up that. Uh, right. Know, how long you been jumping? Got in the way. I started in two thousand, so eighteen years. Eighteen. Congratulations. Thank you. You know how many you have? You don't know. Over 14,000, I think. 14? Like He's got 10,000 more than me. And uh, over 10,000 of those are tandem. Yeah. So Half a minor tandem. Yeah. This is the way it is. It is. I, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I'd rather do tandems than anything else. I love tandem. Don't get it twisted, uh, guys. Uh, people think that they don't want to be tandem instructors. That is the, the best job on earth. If you could, if it was year-round, Right, it almost is here in Texas. Yeah, not really. You know, yeah. I mean, if it was year round and you didn't have to travel, that'd be the best job on earth. Yeah, you know. Right. But in order to in order to stay full, you got you got to travel. You got to chase yeah. that sun, and I just can't. Yeah, you know, it gets tough as we get old, buddy. Yeah, the more traveling you do, the the older it gets, and the less yeah, you right. like it. You know, but uh, but as far as I mean, it's you have somebody for their first time every time. You know, isn't that you awesome? never have a bad jump. Ever. Even when it goes sideways, it's still their first time, you know. So right, yeah. yeah. And then you're a real life superhero. Yeah, you know what I mean. Super powerful experience that you get to share with somebody for their first time. You know, yep. you never have a bad day. It's amazing. Yeah. Like uh, the wind tunnel is a little different. Like people high five you, but you don't get the hugs and that that tearful gratitude where people are like, "My mom wanted to do this and she died, and I did it for yeah. her." Like those moments will just break you down. So yeah. Oh yeah, I've cried. You, yeah. You know, more than a handful of times, you know. Yeah. Tandem instructors are blessed, baby, by God. God loves you, right? You're changing lives, man. Don't forget it. I know it's tough. I know it's hot. I know you're humping. Man, you're changing lives. Every jump's special. So, um, the funnest. It's, uh, well, what, it's the funnest because of what you've put together. There's other good drop zones. Oh, here, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, Skydive yeah. Temple is a lot of fun. Shout out to Mark Mark. But... Lone Star does have the Lone Star. Like, people want to go to Lone Star. That's just the way it is, right? Like, you know, there's other options. Like, ah, there are no other options. I mean, it's, I guess, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> I, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. Um, how many how many DZs have you owned prior to this? Because this isn't your first run, and it's obvious by the way things run, right? Like, things are moving. People are jumping seven, eight times before noon. You know, you got the Sunrise Crew, Steve Downey, Tom Johnson, Mudbug. Those guys show up at freaking 5 30 right and they'll man i mean like you've got a system down and the people love you what how many dz's did you own before this uh lone star is my third one so. third dz yeah where's your first where's it start minneapolis minnesota minnesota that's yeah. gotta be fucking tough uh you know we were doing uh when i uh stepped away uh we were doing almost six thousand tandems in seven months 
it's condensed, yeah. right? So you got to yeah. get it in, and people know it too. They know when yeah, it's coming. There's a sense of urgency, you know, up north. You yeah. Know, so, and then uh, my second one was in uh, the Houston market. Yeah, West Side. Yeah. <laughs> we came down to West Side a couple of times. Yeah. I liked your logo. You had that that that. Yeah. 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 Well, we started with that because I needed to get a, you know, in Minneapolis with the first one, all the planning, you know, and whatnot. And uh, a good friend of mine, Brian Mason, uh, was doing my web stuff. And he's like, we got to get a website up. We got to, you got, you need it now, you know? And I like, I didn't even know a name yet. You know, we were still in the planning stages, you know, and I right. knew I was going to be on the west side of the cities because uh, that's where all the money was. And, you know, mm -hmm. there was one out there before that shut down, but they were a little further out than I wanted to be. So they were like an hour and a half from the cities, and the other the competition was an hour, you know, the other direction. So right. I, I wanted to be in that hour mark on the west side, but I didn't know where, you know. So was it going to be Skydive Hutchinson? Was it going to be Skydive, you know, whatever? So, right. But I didn't know where I was going to land. But the importance of the marketing, the website, you know, getting all the – all of that together was, you know, critical. So I just like West Side, you know, yeah. and uh, West hey, Side of what, you know. So right. and uh, yeah. It, hey, as a brother, I saw that shit. I was like, West Side, fuck yeah, we going to West Side. <laughs> it worked really, really well. Yeah, we yeah. went down there and jumped yeah. with you guys a couple times. It was really cool. It was a, it was a fun DZ, man. Texas was a struggle, you know. Texas is a man. Yeah. It is a struggle. You know, you got three, you know, where we're at now, we have over 300 days a year to jump, you know, so there's no sense of urgency, you know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and people are doing a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Awesome, yeah, beautiful yeah. city. San Marcos, New Braunfels, people are uh, thinking about, you know, if you can yeah, just go yeah. float the river, five bucks and beer, yeah. it's kind of hard to go spend a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. But you're in a market to where it's lifetime achievement goals. This is skydiving. Yeah, baby. you know, this is the you're echelon, always gonna, Yeah, you're you always going to have the the rite of passage you know so you're right. always going to have the markets the market's the market it's not going to change where you're at it's just i'm used you know it's way different than a condensed season you know? right right like yeah you were saying minnesota seven months everybody's showing up you're packed yeah. here they trickle in with flip-flops like uh, what yeah yeah so, no sense of urgency down here. none everything moves a little bit slower um difficult business model lots of moving parts um if somebody wants to open a drop zone now, <laughs> what would you say? Uh, you know, I've had people ask me. I've had people come and steal ideas, you know, mm -hmm. on anything All they were doing, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I share as, just ask me, you know, I'll sh share Would, would you everything. do it again? Would I do it again? Um, I didn't think I would do it after the first two mm -hmm. uh, for reasons that some people know, some people don't. Right, but, but uh um, this fell into my lap, right? And I'm good at it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's what you do, man. And it's the uh, niche. so, yeah, I would do it again. Right on, right on. And I wanted people to be confused that the DZO is fucking sitting in the office. Some DZO sit in the office and watch cameras and just tell their staff what to do. Shout out Stuby, <laughs> but this dude's out there fueling the plane, making loads, turning it, getting people on board, getting the manifest together. It's tough, and especially with the King Air, that's so fucking fast man like how do you i can't keep up you know me i'm like shit i'll sit out man like i'm not trying to get on every load and like you guys are rocking in fact yeah that's your king air one of your king airs right there this is a this is a 20 16 was that 16 yeah i don't know i don't know how, how big that was we had the otter we had the king air and uh that's the moment right before we left to build these badass formations man like like I love that drop zone. You've done great things. You got some of the greatest talent in the Central Texas area. Mark Farr, I, I mean, Tom Johnson, Steve Downey. I'm blessed to have the group, the Sunrise Shredders. Sunrise Shredders. Steve shout Downey. Out. For those guys to choose us over other places, and even with the changes in the market right. today. They've told me, and I guess they've told you as well. Right. Um, they said it on the show. Know, they're not leaving Lone Star. You know, they're sticking with me, you know. And, uh, I mean, I'm blessed for that caliber of talent, Yeah. you know. And it goes beyond the local talent. Miles Dasher out of Idaho uses you regularly for his wingsuit camps. Mm -hmm. Right? How many times has Miles been here? Miles, you're coming on my show in October, dog. You told me. It's like next month, son. He's coming back for another camp. Yeah, he's doing, uh, he's coming out for Dead Man. 
He's coming the off dead of the man. Dead Man. Sweet. Yeah, Dead Man Boogie. Um, so that you know, and again, a, a an amazing athlete, amazing person, and Red such Bull a Air beautiful Force. person too. God, he yes. is like one of the most humble, real uh, deal, amazing. And uh, yeah, for him to come and you know, yeah. he's been here twice now, and uh, the Dead Man Boogie will be three times. We're putting something together for Mexico with them too. So nice. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Miles, man. Super cool guy. He's taught a lot of my friends how to base jump. He runs a base course. I think he still does in Idaho at the Snake River. So if you guys want to learn how to base from a quality fucking guy and not just some asshole climbing towers in the middle of the night, go to Miles Dasher. <laughs> right on. Uh, we just mentioned the Dead Man Boogie. Um, I've been to a lot of boogies, guys. I've been to a lot of ceremonies, you know, SCRs, SCSs, whatever they are, right? And uh, there's some ceremonies that are heartfelt, you know, I think it's the SCR where they're like, what's in the West? You know, Scott Ivins, you know, what's in the East? Scott Ivins started, that's that's good history. The Dead Man Boogie is soul crushing almost, but in a good way. It's a way for you to honor your fallen friends. <clears throat> if you're in the sport long enough, you're gonna lose some buddies, man, some family. We all have, the Dead Man Boogie allows us to honor them. It is a real ceremony. Does it, okay, so you didn't invent that. No, no, no. Yeah, no. yeah, that was Mad Max. Mad Max and his group, and I yeah. can't, I'm bad, I'm terrible right. with names. Uh, but it's it's a humbling experience because it's 30 to 50 of you guys, us, hanging out. Um, there's a big wooden coffin. Yeah. There's a bunch of crosses um, nailed in the ground. Come on, put it on me. Um, they pre-make these little crosses for you, so you go grab one and you write down your loved one's names on the little cross, and you put it back in the ground. And there's probably a hundred of them. And it's not just skydivers; it's family members. It's your mom who had breast cancer, your dad, your brother had died in a car accident. It doesn't matter what it is. And Mad Max leads a ceremony around the bonfire where we call out their names. Man, God is moving. It's moving. And then we put the crosses into this wooden coffin. And they carry the coffin to the bonfire, and it just goes up, and it's the most silent, moving experience you've had probably all year up until that point, unless you've gone like Burning Man or something. And it's it's grounding, right? It kind of it kind of tells you like why you're here and what you do and and what to be thankful for. And like when we did it last year, it was last year. Yeah. It stuck with me for months, man. I was talking about it for months. You know, I had the pictures up on Instagram. I don't know if I have the pictures up, but just the fire and just the love, the love that goes around the circle of skydivers. What a community. And when we lose one, it's precious because there's not many of us. And I want to thank you right now on behalf of all of us for hosting these ceremonies. And to the degree that you do, you do jump specials, you bring in specialty aircraft, you got this giant barbecue going on, there's music, there's... You know, there's tents. Like, it's a big deal to host something like that. I, I host shit, and I don't fucking feel like doing all that work, but I do because I love my friends, and you do it for us because you love us. And thank you for the Dead Man Boogie. What, what are the dates this year? Do you know? Uh, October 26th, 27th, and 28th, I believe. I'd have to look at the calendar. Man, if you can't make it to Scott Ive Lone Star in Luling, Texas, you should do a Dead Man Boogie if you're a jumper. It's for your soul, man. And... Yeah, I can't wait for this one this year. This one's going to be big. We got uh, teams coming out. Uh, Miles, Join the team.com, baby. Miles Dasher's doing a wingsuit thing. Uh, I'll organize for you. I can't remember all the organizers. We got the list, yeah. but yeah. yeah you, I'll you'll come probably out with one some of shit. them. Yeah. You know, uh, fly around yeah, do some so wazzy blocks. Last year, I think we had 60 total registrants, but we had the cold weather snapped in. I don't think we had ever. I don't think we had all 60 people there right. every day, but this year I think we're going to push over 100. Easy. Yeah. Um, and if not, I don't care if it's 10, man. It's it's something I need. Uh, I lost Ryan Risberg this year. Um, still fucking with me, guys. Friends of the show, it's still fucking with me. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him in and let him go. I was on the Ash Dive with him, but still feel he's around, man. Um, <sighs> so let's get to, let's get to sports that – Kill our friends. Base jumping. Base. <laughs> I'm a ghetto bird. I haven't made it to Moab. I'm ghetto bird three. My ghetto birds is my base crew out of Oklahoma. Shout out to the ghetto birds. Uh, blazing trails, man. 
jumping antennas, making bad decisions. That's what we do, right? Middle of the night, son. Um, how many jumps you got? Um, uh, around two hundred. Holy shit, Joe! Wow, I got thirty-five. <laughs> That's still a bunch. Brother. It's it's a, a everyone bunch. was magic, man. I'm not gonna take anything away from them. My boys all got hundreds and hundreds like you. Um, the Moab trip. You went in the summer, so it wasn't cold. Uh, it was fall, I think. Fall, yeah. okay, so no towards ice. Yeah, towards, right. I think it was last part of October. So did you guys RV in and just camp, base camp and go out? or Ho- did you Hoteled it. You hoteled it, you right? Hoteled on. it, right yeah. On, yeah. So the Banditos usually take an RV in. Yeah. Those are some other boys of mine, but yeah. 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 So what was your what was your favorite jump in Moab? Because there was, what, 18 exit points or some bullshit like that? Oh, there's, uh, there's I think, way more than that. I don't okay. know. I'm not, you know, a Moab expert by right. any means. Uh, they were all magical. I mean, yeah. they're all magical. Rushing it was probably the scariest. Rushing it is that the one where you got to go down the little rope and then tie off and go? No, rushing it's uh, it's uh, I don't even know what height it's at. It's a shorter, it's a lower one, mm-hmm. but uh, the exit point it's kind of in a in a V. So if you have more than a forty five off either way, <sighs> you're into the wall. Uh, um, but uh, I've had a one eighty once back at a tower. Yeah, yeah, that was fuck crazy. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> but uh I mean there you know, I like the low stuff and I buildings, like the low and stuff. And buildings are my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And, How many bees you got? Um uh, I don't know, ten, fifteen maybe. Really? Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, I know it, man. Yeah. Creeping while you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the sad part about it, you know. Uh yeah. well I did that's the fun I did part the KL about tour. It. So, well, more than fifteen if you count the KL tour because I jumped the you did the tower. The tower heaps when I was out there, you know. So. How many times did you get it? Oh, I don't even know. You I was out there for, yeah, as many as I could. Yeah, you know? how long um, were you there? I was there for, I think, a week, but the event was, I don't even remember anymore. All I, right, so KL Tour. KL Tour is Kuala Lumpur in, what country is that? Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Malaysia. Uh, it's a giant tower. It looks like the Circuit of America. No, it's, what is that tower? In, uh, uh, fuck, man. It's just like a tower. It's a tower. It's a it's long, a, tall yeah, tower. Big pancake. Big, and how tall is it? I don't even know. It's fucking high. You guys can look at the videos on YouTube. Kuala Lumpur. So that, I want to go, man. Right? So did you jump just the lower stage or were you able to go up top? Uh, they Yeah, it's all on one level on the KL Tower. But I've seen and some then, people get up from higher. Like there's a crane or something up there they've jumped off yeah, of and went by the pancake. Maybe for special events. Or oh, okay, you know, cool. But just for you guys, it was just. When I was there, yeah, there was just, uh, you know, the one level there. But what were you, what were you jumping? I was jumping uh, for gear. Yeah. Uh, Apex DP with a Flick 266. Flick 266. Was it vented? Yeah. It was? Oh, you had nice gear. Yeah. I got a Mojo 280. <laughs> no vents, baby. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah. yeah. I got, uh, I in 09, I put it on the shelf when I was playing my first DZ because the competition was calling the city that I was op- going to operate out of and you know, you don't want this guy. You know, no, base jumping, running the uh, skydiving drop zone. He's a, he's a, you know, he's been arrested for base jumping. He's dangerous. Blah blah blah. You know, he did base jumps out of airplanes, which is illegal, and all this stuff. Uh, and, they don't understand that. And uh, so I put it on the shelf, just you know, and it's been on the shelf ever since. But uh, mm-hmm. as of lately, uh, I got an order ready to to push play on uh, for new gear, and really? I got a few more things that I want to do. I want to do the big big walls in norway uh-huh. and uh hey i'll buy that flick i don't have it anymore oh, okay yeah. so but i want yeah, something so with vents i want to jump yeah. again too man yeah i don't know how many i'm gonna do but like i said i got I got uh a few things that left that i need to uh knock off the list i'm considering so. the walls all you gotta do is track away now you're fucking skydiving yeah you know what i mean yeah. like it's not like there's st- i mean they're still killing themselves on the walls you know well man they're taking it low they're trying to go big I yeah. just want to take the. Exp- I say that. That's a lie. <laughs> I once said I wouldn't go below a 150 until I had a thousand jumps. That was a fucking lie. <laughs> right on, man. Yeah. So what's what's up with uh, running into the cartel? <laughs> <laughs> Which cartel and where? Because you're well traveled. Yeah. So I've jumped in 11 different countries, worked in or operated in seven of those 11. Okay. Uh, so we did uh, we did an event in Honduras, in mm-hmm. Tele Honduras, 
we went down in July to to do some tandems and scope it out and find a a suitable location for a, a winter boogie. So the, when you say we, it's in you and your own associates from America, or you guys have connects down in Honduras? One of my employees uh, from one of the other drop zones uh, is a Honduran. Okay. Did you uh, ferry a plane down, or you rented one when you we got We took there? ours down. You took yeah. your plane down, all your gear. The first time we went in July, just to sort things out, we just mm-hmm. went down, did a hand, small handful of tandems on the International Airport in uh, San Pedro Sula. Um, All right. To let the head of the their civil aviation, which is the equivalent to our FAA, mm-hmm. see what we were doing, experience it. And uh, so I think we did like five or six tandems. And then I did some fun jumps. Shook and some then, hands, uh, kissed some babies. The, uh, the head of civil aviation was so impressed with my swoop, if you want to call it, because I don't really, you know, I'm not any well, good at it. You came hot, but, though, uh, yeah. He liked it so much. He's like, can he do that again? You know what? And so the owner of the aircraft said, as many times as he wants you to jump, I'll pay for the time in the airplane, you know? So, wow. Uh, so that was kind of cool. So, yeah, that's way cool. You know, and then uh, the last jump of the day, we went to uh, do a beach landing in uh, Omar's hometown and uh, just landed on the beach, bandit jump, you know, just went over Beautiful. and then landed surrounded by kids again and uh walked across the street started having some drink and food you know and then right. uh the police chief actually was having dinner there that night which we didn't know about or i don't know if it was planned or not but they shut the whole the, the street both ways was shut down the restaurant was you know blocked off he had about 50 other officers you know armed obviously to watch out for him and his oh, crew wow. while he uh, was having dinner. So I got a picture with the chief of police and of Honduras, and, uh, yeah, it was a little... <laughs> That's little, fucking uh, nerve-wracking. Yeah, especially when you fast or rewind uh, a day or two prior to that when we were running around. I got to meet the head of the cartel, Unbeknownst, I guess that when you talk about bringing turbine aircraft into <laughs> a country like Honduras, some it, ears gets people, perk up. it yeah. gets some people's attention. So, um, so we got to, I got to, yeah, sit down and, uh, um, and w- they were trying to figure out who I was, what I was doing and, uh, why I was there and all of that and w- was threatened to be killed by, which ended up being the head of the cartel. I had a guy on either side of me, both with guns in their lap, and then the driver of the uh, Ford Expedition was the one yelling and doing all the talking. And it ended up he being he was the El Jefe. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, how the fuck did you end up in a truck with these guys? We were driving around meeting people, and uh, my friend's ex brother in law is actually. Wor- an okay. enforcer for the cartel. So okay. we were hanging out with him and, you know, they wanted to know why. And so they said, hey, you get in this truck? Yeah, so we are getting lunch and they pulled up and like, hey, basically, I mean, yeah. You got to come with us. <laughs> Pretty much. Were you shitting your fucking pants? A little bit, yes. Holy fuck. Did you think you were going to die? Mm, I don't know if I thought I was going to die, but I didn't think... Uh, yeah. I wasn't comfortable. I was right. very, very uncomfortable, yeah. Holy fuck. So at the end of it, was he cool? <laughs> or was he like, oh, well, fuck we, it? I mean, yeah, we went on our way, you know, and... Never saw him again? Never asked? Never know? saw him again. Saw a lot of his people again, you know? I mean, they were keeping... Yeah. I, you know, I think they were keeping tabs on us. You didn't ask him if he wanted to invest? <laughs> <laughs> that's my first thought. Like, hey, son, you want to get in on this? Like, yo, let's do this. I think that's what they were uh, going after. Yeah, going don't do after, that. Yeah, they'll, no. they'll be up here at fucking Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around Lone Star like, this is our shit. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't do that. Yeah. All right, so go to our segment, Friday Freak Out. Join the team. Team. Hey, love you guys, man. So this one, I'm not sure how this is preventable. We're, we're, we'll watch it right now. Um, they do a pretty sick, like, MFS exit, and we'll show it. And dude's rig just comes out. Maybe he scraped it on the door. Maybe he scooted down the bench and he caught it with his hand. 
Oh, no, we're not doing that one. We're doing this one. Okay. So, Joe, the reason we're doing this one is because you've been wingsuiting lately. Miles got you in a suit. Well, yeah. Before Miles started showing up, I probably had, I don't know, maybe 100 uh -huh. wingsuit jumps. And then... Uh, Could you ever do that? <laughs> that's fucked like up. Like a flat spin oh, out of control. Oh, yeah, my scary. God, that's fucked. But, yeah, so when he started showing up the second time uh, he came out, uh, I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to jump with the man. So, Fuck no. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had a flat spin? Have you ever felt it coming? No, but out of, I got 37 or 38 cutaways. Mm -hmm. Four of those on sport rigs, the rest of them on tandems. Uh -huh. And two of them are wing on suits. wing suit. You've had to yeah. chop a suit. I've had to chop while in a suit. What know, was it? Line twist. Just too many. What were you yeah. jumping? Stiletto 120. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I'll jump my 96 and you're just asking for it. <laughs> yeah, so have you have you ever felt the slide, though? Man, because that flat spin, I mean, I don't want to knock homeboy because, I, man, I would do want to knock homeboy. Arch, man. <laughs> right, roll over arch, get rid of your wings, and you're fucking just tracking. You don't have to be spinning. Yeah. He got stuck on his side. Look, he's trying to collapse his wings, but his legs are wide open, so his yeah. tail is still catching wind, and it's 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 propelling him around. Collapse your knees, man. I know it's Ball tough. Ball up. Ball up. Fucking roll to your side. Get it. He could have got out of that shit. Yeah. But it happens fast. If you, like, de-arch and try to max, it feels like you start sliding out. It's, out, it's like a car hydroplaning, and you can feel it coming. And if you're off, you're going to fucking spin. Yeah. Man, that's nuts, dude. Like, I hate that feeling of being out of control in the sky. Like, oh, fuck. When I put that suit on for the first time after many, many years of not right. having one on, right. I was scared again, you know? I yeah. Mean, and, you know, I'm not too proud to admit that, you know, I still get scared. I'll be honest, yeah. though. I mean, fear keeps you alive. Exactly. So, but as soon as you exit, it's oh, whack. Yeah, exactly. It's easy. It's yeah. the shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Wingsuiting's fun if you're with friends and somebody badass. If you're by yourself, that shit is boring. I don't give a fuck if you're flying or not. Yeah, I, I can't I stand it. I mean, it all. I mean, it's all boring if you're by yourself. You know. Yeah, keep it real, right? Yeah, that's I mean, true. That's, you know, that's, that's one true. of the things that I've always, you know, tried not to let the students fall through the cracks. Try to always be jumping with, making sure somebody else is jumping with them, making sure they're not doing solos and stuff like that. You know. Right. Who wants to jump by themselves? I mean, they're out here. People come out here for the camaraderie, for the friendship, for something they're missing, you know? Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, the skydiving community becomes their family. Mm -hmm. You know, we do potlucks on holidays because a lot of people don't, you know, have family, family or choose not to go home for, on holidays, you know? So, mm -hmm. And it uh, it worked for me for a lot of years, you know, still does. So. No, that's why people go to you because what you just said. Right? Nobody's going to fall through the cracks at Lone Star. We're all family. You're going to make sure you have that family atmosphere. It's not about the amount of jumps you're doing or the money you're spending today or what rig you have. It's like, you're skydiving? We're fucking skydiving. Yeah. What do you want to do? I love that about your place, man. I do that. I walk around like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Just get on low with me, right? Because oh, that's on. how it if is. If you want to jump and you go. Yeah, that's true. I'm a one jump wonder, <laughs> baby. But I'll take a couple people yeah, with yeah, me. No, yeah, <laughs> you are good. You do more than one jump. Nah, I'll do one. Uh, that's fucking. I'll do one. All right, so um, back to Lone Star. Why a King Air over an Otter or a Caravan or anything else? Well, I got to Lone Star via Keith George. I worked for him. And Shout out Keith George, Skydive Midwest. He was a partner uh, in Lone Star with TJ and Molly. Mm -hmm. What up, TJ and Molly? I got sent down there after the season was over in 16 uh, to manage the place. So you were in Wisconsin. I was in Wisconsin. I for in sixteen I worked for Keith. Okay. I took in fifteen I had sur back surgery, stepped away from my other two for whatever reason. Most people know, you know, whatever it, does, it is. Nobody's what it business is, right now, know, but yeah. So, but uh, stepped away and then took a year off, rehabbed my back, and then um I was literally driving back to Minnesota from Texas and Keith George is like a week before Christmas. Keith George gives me a call and offers me a job. And I after owning two places, I'm like, eh, right. you know, I was a little apprehensive. I said yes. And then the closer it got to the beginning of the season, I went from, I got to be part-time, you know? And so right. I started out part-time and then that transitioned to me, you know, being full-time. Right Loved it. Didn't matter if I was working for 
you know, somebody else or, right. you know, whatever. And Keith George is an amazing person to work for. Runs a good place. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so man, he, I need to make, we need to make it up there. He's given me many a fucking opportunity to come. It's just time. Yeah. 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 You should take advantage. Of it. I he's, will. He's a good person. Really I will, good man. Person. But, uh, so he sent me down to manage Sky and Lone Star. And I got down here November 14th or 16th of 16. What was, what was the issue? What was the issue yeah, with? Yeah, with, with the way it was being ran. Uh, <laughs> like, speak freely or? <laughs> um, mismanagement. Freely and respe respectfully as yeah, yeah, we yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be professional. Yeah. Uh, it was mismanaged. Uh, so Financials or just staff? Staff and management. Okay. Uh, TJ hadn't worked in the sport. Okay. He, he was a competitor, four-way, free fly competitor. Right. Molly, I think, worked a little bit in Manifest. And, okay. Uh, but their biggest challenge was they became new parents. Right. Right, right at about the right. same time yeah. they were becoming DZOs. Right. And... It's I mean, much. just one of, of those things, being a new parent right. or a DZO, Drive you fucking nuts or a DZO. is right. more than a, a plate full, you know? Right. Um, so putting those two together, um, yeah, right. a real big challenge. And then one of the reasons for my success and the other things that I've done, and, and Lone Star included, is that I was able to work for some of the best DZs in the world mm -hmm. and some of the worst. Awesome. Experience. So I've seen what works really well, what doesn't, you know, and, and I'm, I have tenacity, you know, so, right. yeah. but without having that, if you only see one picture and TJ's home drop zone, you know, before he hooked up with Keith was Scott out of Chicago. No. That's such a well-oiled machine, it's and Rook a, does such a good job. And shout out to Roger Nelson. Nelson, Roger, is one of the, the guys kid. that I learned a lot from. You right know, on. his showmanship, his his willingness to share everything. I you've met up, Roger. I've met Roger. Yeah, you've been here for eighteen years. You've definitely met Roger. And uh, you come from that generation. The first time I met him, I'll never forget. I had less than a hundred jumps. It was the end of my first season. We went down for Thanksgiving boogie, super cheap jumps. And it was socked in from 3,000 feet all the way up. Right. And Roger's like, as long as you guys want to jump, I'll fly, but we're going to only go to 10 because i got to stay underneath, you know, the arrivals or whatever, right. you know, and we really shouldn't be up here, you know. But as long as you guys want to jump, I'll keep flying. Okay. And uh, so, Old school I mean, skydiving, baby. Super old school. And uh, and then after we, you know, got too bad and everybody starts landing off, we, you know, nobody wants to jump anymore. So, like, they shut it down and we're kicking around in the DZ waiting for the weather to clear. And Roger, I'm in the cafe or cafeteria getting a soda or a Red Bull or whatever it was. And Roger strolls through and he's like, Hey, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? Awesome. You know, how many jumps you got? Well, let me show you around, you know, and, and took me around and gave me the tour of the place, you know? Right. And that's something that stuck with me the whole time. You know, when I'm, really on my game i try to shake every customer's you hand. fucking do i see it a hundred percent and thank him for coming out wow, where are you from, from what Roger do you do Nelson. what you know and and that's the reason why i do that is is that first time i met roger was that was a powerful experience for that's somebody with a with hundred jumps you know yeah and uh and he he whether he did or he didn't genuinely care about you you felt that he that did that love and that care that and he put that in not only to me but the next guy and 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 the customers and, right and uh he was i've met a lot of people along the way and nobody did it better than him right on you know so shout out roger nelson sugar alpha the books out um you can read the, you can read the story man it's an amazing story you met roger nelson see before the book came out, I'd sit around firesides, you know, bonfires with all these old school, like, accuracy jumpers, uh, style and accuracy guys, and they talk about the old school days and Roger Nelson. And then when I work in Monterey Bay, he would go out to Monterey 
and with his King Airs and planes and stuff and do stuff. So like I've always heard of the legend, but I've never met him. Right? Yeah. I've always heard of him, of this guy. Right? And he had that kind of impact on you, and that's who he was. Yeah. And Rook has that. Rook, you he talks to you directly, yeah. like you know. Rook, Rook's a lot more reserved, and and he's not the the as outgoing of a personality as his dad was. But he's okay. he's he's just as genuine, and he's just as willing to share information and talk to you, mm-hmm. um, and everybody just like his dad was. Yeah, um, and that's another amazing that's person. Cool. That's so. cool to know because I see you walk up to the guy with five jumps. Hey man, how's it going? What's going on? Like, you know, thank you for being here. You you thank everybody for being there, personally. Well, without them, I couldn't do it. You know? Yeah, that's I mean, awesome. But you but you know that. A lot of people don't know that. People think um, they're lucky to have, you know, like some people think that, you know, you're lucky to have me doing this for you. Well, no, they're paying you, motherfucker. You're lucky, yeah. right? And that's I mean, how you can, treat people. You know, I mean, let's face it, you know, they can go anywhere. You know, right, and I don't have the best facilities. I don't have the best airplanes. I don't have, you know, right. the best anything. You don't have a ten million dollar facility, but you got a lot of love, buddy. You know, I mean, yo. So I don't get to jump much. I really want to get out there, and my struggle is I need time with my kids. So Joe buys my kids a fucking inflatable water park just so I can fucking skydive and they can have fun while we're there. And I can like I can help organize or coach something, but not much. And you still did it, man. Yeah. And it's awesome. And that kind of stuff shows to your people. That's why I send everybody to you, man. Well, I love kids. I mean, I love kids. So I don't want to say I don't want I want the drop zone to be you know kid friendly to mm-hmm. a to an extent. You know, as long as they're well behaved and semi looked after. You know, I don't want right. them, you know running around you know, landing free area, rain and trying to touch and, the airplane and shit. And, right? Yeah, you know and all the kids that come out are, are all, you know, they're great, you know, so um, that's our future skydivers, you know. They sure are. So. They're flying in the tunnel, too. It's amazing. Hey, man, you get 10 minutes of time for this show, but you've had free time for me for the last two fucking years. So you're not going to use this 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. No, you're not. Why? Time, brother. Time. You can fucking come up and fly 10 minutes. I know. I know. I, what is it about so, the tunnel? Let's be so, honest. What What is it about the tunnel? It's defeating. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, son. Oh, my God. Um, so for the amount of years in the sport, the number of jumps that I got, I feel like I should be, Kill you me. know, at this level. Or at least be able to hang with the free flyers, you know. Right. Cause, I mean, it's that would be my choice of skydiving mm-hmm. if I was any good. But I'm not. Right. I suck. You know, right. I've had I've had a drogue tied to my ass for, you know I don't like that. I don't like people saying that. I don't like people saying that. Listen, yeah, okay. You can't f- carve on your fucking head because you've been under drogue, but you have kept thousands of mothers and daughters and brothers safe. Oh, and fathers. Yeah, and- so there's I, skill there because they, all tandem guys are like, oh, I suck. I'm like, you don't fucking suck, bro. No, you're so, amazing at what you do. Yeah. So if I got somebody strapped to me in a tandem rig on, I don't care who it is, what they do. Yeah. Gang super, shit. super, super comfortable in any situation. Right. Even aircraft emergency situation. I've been in with them. Weather. Uh, weather. The whole doesn't nine matter. Years, super comfortable. Soldier. I, that's a whole different skill set. So you don't My suck. Free fly. Bro. Your free fly is not optimal. Isn't where it should be for my number of years of the sport, my jumps is what I feel like. Because if you were free flying this entire time, but you weren't, you were building right. other skills. Somebody had to drill this into me because I had a, I had a, uh, I had a breakdown one day at the drop zone because I was, you know, fifteen hundred tandems in. I've got two, three hundred, two or three thousand skydives, and I'm like, and I went on a jump with some of my friends, and they flew circles around me. Right, and I landed, and I was fucking discouraged. And I told Jack, I was like, "I'm wasting my fucking time, man. I can't fly." You know, this is—I think it was that day that led me to go to the tunnel eventually, though. But I was like, "Yo, this is not working. I suck." And Jack's like, "No, have you seen your landings? Have you seen these people that you like?" He's like, "You're amazing at what you do. You don't do that, but nobody pays you to be on your head. Nobody gives a fuck about your sit fly. Nobody's gonna mm-hmm. give you thirty bucks to go sit fly. They're gonna give you money to shoot video." And your videos are good. He's like, he's gonna take give you money to take him on a tandem, their first skydive safely. He's like, you do that fine. 
then I I, I kind of accepted it, but now I accept it more, right? Like tandem instructors are amazing, and if you do your job well, dude, that is commendable. Just because you can't fuck, who cares about sit flying, man? Yeah. Who cares about head down? I mean, it's fun, but it's fucking novelty, man. Like I, I'm a big advocate for the workers in the sport. If you're shooting video, turning loads, doing tandems, you're a skydiver. If you're out there paying money to hold hold your friend's hands for a couple seconds, it's, I mean, that's, I don't know, man. It's not as serious to me, you know? It's yeah, not it's as... not. And, I, you know, I, like I said, the best thing the best thing or the most fun I can do is do a tandem, you know? Right. So, uh, and I'm really good at it. I mean, and I'm going to, you know, pat myself on the back. Tom Noon said it. Uh, Ted Strong's widow. I can't think of her name right now, which I'm ashamed of. Shout out to Strong, baby. But uh, they both said at different times that I'm one of the most talented tandem instructors in the world that nice. they've ever worked with. So Very good to um, hear, son. So, and that's, you know, I mean, I take pride in my job, right. you know, and the experience that they get. And um, so as I transition away from that mm -hmm. and not doing that every day, I still love to jump. I still want to jump every day. And I can't jump with my friends, so it's frustrating. So I end up not jumping. I've you got know? tunnel time. Bro. I know. I will coach you for free. So last winter I was going to do, I I think I have this number in my head, this magic number. Of, I think I need 40 hours in the tunnel. You know. To yeah, you told I me that. I'm going to buy 40 hours. I'm like That's yeah. a little lofty, man. Let's start with one. <laughs> <laughs> so that never happened because small business ownership, mm -hmm. DZ, life. My money always ends up somewhere else. Gear, you know, I do. Yeah, you, you got know, nice gear. Man, yeah. your fucking staff appreciates the new canopies. I appreciate the new student gear you're getting. I appreciate. We're doing, you know. You, know, you got new suits. You should have bought Wazi Circus suits, but that's fine. We'll talk about know, that after. Didn't, didn't you know, know I, that was a choice. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I'm doing the best I can, you know, as fast as I can without, uh, you know, putting me at myself in jeopardy, you know. Right. So. Um, I think you're missing the point of free Time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So we were, I mean, we were going up there, you know, semi consistently. We're right. trying to, mm -hmm. and then just life happens, you know. I know it. And uh, I know you know, it. I was trying to concentrate on my personal life, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that was yeah, life that was happens, stressful, yeah. you know, and things weren't going, you know, beautiful with that. But uh, now things are back to beautiful, and awesome. uh, so yeah, I mean, we both. Hillary and I both talk about, you know, get back up there on Tuesdays and stuff. Right on. Shout out to Hillary Hewitt. Hey, um, Thursday nights, I host a comp twice a month. Uh, it's two for one for your staff. And I don't know if they know. Will you please spread the word to them? It's 50 bucks. It's $25 each for them to fly. I and they get a lot of time. I believe I've told them, but I, it should be posted. We need to have that. I need to have a poster. I'll put there, something yeah. up out there. I'll do something. Please do. Yeah, please yeah, do, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. You print them, laminate them, I'll hang them up, or Beautiful. we can send me the file. I'll print them, laminate them. I don't care, you know. But uh, right. anything we can do to, you know, um, Jake, the head packer right now, uh, he's trying to get his own little group to, you know, go come up. up there, yeah, Jake so. Till, he's yep. hit me up. He yep. wants to come on so, up. So yeah, let's organize so we, it and yeah. take it to the next level. Over the last couple of months, we've had you know some transition in staff. We got rid of some, you know. Yep. less than stellar and mm -hmm. uh or it was just time for him to move on or whatever you know and uh and we got some really beautiful people in mm -hmm. you know behind them so well um, man now that you brought that up i've got to mention this i'm not going to say names but there was a uh, one of your instructors that was swooping through the the area where the kids were playing uh he was a he was part-time part guy. Time guy but when i brought it to you because i don't want to complain like you've done a lot to me but when I mentioned it to you, it was immediate. It wasn't like, you know, because, like, you lose staff, you lose money. That's fucking $1,000 a day per person that you're making. And for you to be, like, unsafe, out of here. I was, I really respected that. And it was because of the kids. You know what I mean? You did that. You you shut that shit down immediately. And I wasn't expecting that. Because usually DZOs will, will defend their staff to a fault. Like, the dude's unsafe. Well, but he, you know, he's on every load. Like, no, you were like, oh, he did what? That is fucking ridiculous. He's done. You know? like yeah, I mean, Safety is one thing. If it would have been the kids, he could have hit the kids, could have hit a customer. Mm -hmm. He could, I mean, you know, just because he wants to swoop through the the crowd, you know. Right. I mean, not cool. Not you know? cool. So yeah, and yeah, I mean, 
from a DZO standpoint, you know, more bodies on the airplane are better than less bodies on the airplane. Right. But if you're going to be an ass or you're going to put my customers or my staff's kids at risk, it ain't worth it. it ain't worth know? it. And you shut you it know? down, man. I appreciate that for you. So what's next for Skydive Lone Star? I know, you, I know you've got plans for the bigger building. We're, you know, I mean, working at the speed of government and the speed of banks and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's a huge project, you know. Yeah. We're looking at 22 acres plus the rodeo barn. You know, it's a it's a million-dollar project. Yeah. Know, all up. So I was hoping to be done with it by the end of this year, but because I'm new to owning Lone Star, they want to see another year. Okay. On, Doesn't on matter, the books. man. Yeah, no, I mean— it's Let's look five anyway. years out. What are we going to have? We're going to have an awesome facility. We're looking at housing for military. We're looking at some military contracts. So we're going to add housing to that project. God bless um, the military jumpers. It'll man. be 25 like solo rooms mm-hmm. uh, for the officers and, and pilots. And then we'll be able to house uh, 100 to 150 uh, in, in barrack style. Holy stuff. shit. So, we're working on that. And uh, fun and jumpers, we're going to go ahead and fun do Fun jumpers, well, in, with the new facility, air conditioned, larger packing area, m- more than twice what we have now, plus uh, overflow packing in the hangar area. And uh, the barn that's there now is 80 by 120. We're going to kick out 24 feet on two sides of that, room for a restaurant or cafeteria, and then the whole front half, would be 24 by 102 that'll be all the classrooms manifest offices and stuff Beautiful. like that and then you'll walk through to the hangar and uh yeah it's exciting it's exciting. it is exciting and then half of that 22 acres will be an rv park so, so you are doing slots yeah proper rv park slots water hook up power electric the whole nine yards Fucking a. so um skydive dallas back in the day offered um I think it was like three fifty, four hundred a month, all water, all power, and ten jump slots mm-hmm. with or something like that. You guys are calling it, but there was something cool like that. You want to offer something cool like that? Of course, do it. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, the residents are jumping, dude. You're winning. Yeah, and you know exactly. that. Yeah, I don't oh, have to convince yeah. you of that. What I mean, I've been plagued with being short staffed since I took over, um, for reasons you know, multiple, multiple reasons. People you traveled. Know. Yeah. And uh, and it's a challenge to keep, you know, quality staff around at a year-round drop zone, you know, because we, mm-hmm. we st- you know, we still have a winter. We still slow down, mm-hmm. you know. And when I can get all kinds of extra people, is we're slow, you know, so I can't take right. all of them on, you yeah. know, because it's not fair to the guy that's stuck there, you know, with me through the the, the whole season. Yeah, what a balance. Uh, so, 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 so what's happening is uh, wintertime, half the country shuts down for skydiving. And everybody runs south to Texas, Florida, California, Arizona, right? But that's just, I mean, with the guys that have been there all year have the first slot, so you can't take everybody. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Yeah. But those guys got to eat, too, so they're, you got to travel as a professional skydiver. Yeah. It's a great life when you're young, but fuck. And yeah, when you're young, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. I did it for a bit, and it was great. But, uh, but yeah, so once I get to the point where I'm properly staffed and everybody can have a scheduled day off, um, what I did at my other two places was free jumps for the staff on their day off, you know. So fuck yeah. So they come in, they can jump as much as they want, free jumps, and they end up jumping with the students that are there. The you know so, and that was it's my a win deal, win, you know? right? And that, I see. And that was one of the caveats dog. to that deal was, if there's somebody jumping by themselves, you, you have, have to, to include them, right? You know? Dude, and, that is a winning philosophy. Because, man, that is a winning flow. And what do you also do with the tunnel instructors? I fly instructors. We go out. If we organize two or three people, our our slots covered, because we're getting people to jump, man. And that people are so happy to be there. Yeah. You know, they walk out so they don't know what they're gonna do. And fun jumpers, if they bring out a tandem, they get a free jump. You know, for every tandem they bring out as well. You know, so coveted slot, son. <laughs> Making it as you know as easy to you know. Right on. Is there anything you want to plug real quick? Uh, go ahead and plug the Dead Man's Boogie. Dead Man team's going to be there. Miles Dash is going to be there. Sorry, I don't have the list of all the organizers. But was, was. son. But uh, the the kickoff jump uh, is going to be me, 
I, I'm just going to hang it out there because I'm scared and it's going to be freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so first load out of the sky van, I'm going to be painted up as a sugar skull, black skull suit and inside a coffin. Wood coffin. I'm on that the load, baby. The real deal, wood coffin with a lid and everything, and I'm going to get tossed out of it and get kicked the lid off and crawl out of the coffin for the jump number one of Dead Man Boogie 10. That's, so. that's fucking dope. Question, are you going to rig pilot shoots or a cypress on this thing? Yeah, so we're going to have a, a regular 54, 60-inch drogue on the lid. Okay. And uh, I have a 100-inch drogue for the coffin the coffin itself so. have you have you done anything like that no i'm scared to death of what how's it closed there is no hinges no nothing i'll have two ropes <laughs> she said nails They're gonna nail you. i mean there are some people that are probably trying to put nails in there. <laughs> <laughs> hillary <laughs> depending on what day. Yeah, what day. <laughs> so what they gonna, how are they gonna close it do you know like so the, yeah the, so the lid will just sit on and i'll hold it closed oh because it'll be handles yeah so we'll put rope handles on it so i can hold the lid closed so it won't be attached to the coffin itself in right, any way right, right, right. Uh, I, I saw a refrigerator, a refrigerator jump in Eloy, and something happened with the pressure, and the door was really fucking hard to open. They thought it was just gonna be like kick out and go, and it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it was like, oh, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, explode out the door, yeah. right? So yeah, kick the fucking door off. Yeah, you know? uh, that's gonna be dope, dude. Yeah, uh, we're actually, I think it's gonna be such an awesome opportunity to capture that. We're actually trying to, we're reaching out to some of the local distilleries, the tequila distilleries, trying to get uh, Epsilon, a sponsorship. You need to reach out to Epsilon Tequila. They have sugar skulls on their bottle. That's that's what we drink. Perfect. Oh, dude, it's local too, I think. Is it local? Oh, we don't know. It's local. So, All right. again, one of my things is trying to keep everything local, you know, so. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do with the show too. We're trying to get local sponsors. Yeah. So, man, that's dope. The dead man, huh? Yeah. Um, do I'm you still do free rentals on Thursdays? Yes, we switched days. We switched okay. that to Tuesdays because the competition was closed on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday. But then we decided to close on Tuesdays as well. So it, that deal is back on Thursdays. On Thursdays. Yeah, free gear rental on Thursdays. Man, you should close on Thursdays and open on Tuesdays. Um, our slowest days okay. consistently are Tuesdays. Tuesday. Okay. Even with. The other place being closed, it's still the slowest, slowest day. day. Okay. And then Thursdays are next slowest day, so we've considered maybe shutting the you know doors on hey, Thursday. At least for the winter, we'll probably go to five days a week. But. Listen, to what I'm saying, guys. On Thursday, students, if you don't have an A license yet, it's free rentals at Lone Star. You're like a big boy. You pay twenty five dollars a fucking slot for a skydive, not double, right? So you're getting double the amount of jumps for the same amount of money. Go to Lone Star, free, and then free gear rental, student or not. Student or not, student just or free gear rental. Free gear rental. Well, most people, I mean, you know, by the time you get a license, but still, I mean, you know, some people don't have it. Yeah, a license, they still don't have it. You know, a rig yet because they can't afford it or whatever. They're still renting. They're not jumping as much because of it. So we're trying to take care of that. You know, so right on, man. And then um, first Friday, first Friday, fifteen dollar jumps. Fuck out of here, you guys! This is Lodi, fifteen dollar skydives altitude. And altitude is fourteen grand in the in the King Air. Um, and we'll have that back soon. Um, okay, first Friday's fifteen dollar jumps, free rentals on Thursdays, and then what's the Saturday morning deal? If you're on the first load of the day, it's nineteen dollars mm -hmm. all day. I think all day. So these are weekly specials, guys. This is worth coming down to Luling, getting a fucking tent, and staying a week, man, and and blasting through the sky, man. These the the prices are right. Right, the drop zone's right. It's badass, man. We're out there having fun. You'll see me out there. My kids are on ATV, eight, wait, four wheelers and shit, water slides and shit. <laughs> uh, you've got the what's that chicken truck thing you got? What's that called? The uh, clucking, the, the cockpit, that, the that, cockpit. That's uh, as of lately, that's been a little bit uh, uh, not underutilized. Let's say right. so. But yeah, we had a food truck out there. Food for, truck station, baby. But good food for too. a minute and. Uh, I'm in the process of finding uh, somebody to run it. So okay, yeah. You know, Temple uh, Packers Temple moved on. So did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck. Packers, you want to come somewhere and work a food truck? 
packs of parachutes make some loot. <laughs> I need a good cook. Need a good cook. Revenue split. Right on. So how do people find you? Uh, LoneStar.com. Skydivelonestar.com. So uh, last question. If somebody wanted to follow your your footsteps and, and jump in Everest and open and fail at a couple drop zones and then become successful, what, what would you tell them right now? I want to be a professional skydiver. I want to make 14,000 skydives and jump over Everest. What would you say? Uh, believe in the experience, uh, the tandem experience, because that's how you're going to get the – if you're going to make money in the sport, you got to throw drogues, you know, um, at least early on. And uh, believe in the experience. Uh, the thing I hate the most is walking around the corner and running into a tandem instructor that's bitching about having to do tandems or walking into a packing trailer and just cursing and swearing that, oh, I got to do a tandem or I hate this or this, th you know, or, or making fun of the customer or making, you know, just – just not being happy doing it, you know? Right. And uh, if you believe in it and you remember it's their first jump, it's easy. And travel. Exactly. Those are, those, are the, those are the two things. I know we always lose the good ones in, a, in anything we do, right? As, right. As, a, as a business owner, you always lose the good ones, the good employees. They move on to bigger and better things. That's why uh, they're good employees. That's why they're good employees, right? And I've always encouraged that. I've never held anybody back. It, it sucks to lose them, you know, but it's refreshing that you got them to that next level. You Cootsie. Know? Same you know? thing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great you know? guy, but you, you elevated him up, and now he's, what, jumping out of helicopters in Israel or some crazy yeah, shit? Yeah, crew chief for, uh, yeah, yeah, three figures a year, you know. That's what he did in the military. Yeah. I knew that was coming, and I encouraged him, like, you know. He, there was even a mechanics job that he could have took sooner. I'm like, you should just do that until the next one comes available. He's like, well, right. then I'm tied into that contract. I'm like, well, but at least you're over there, you know. Right. And that's really what he wanted to do. Yeah. You know, he'd complain about the military, but, you know. They can't whatever. let it go, yeah. dog. They love that shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. I Joe miss, Johnson. I miss him. Oh, well, fucking A, man. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure, brother. Super easy, right? Yeah. Yeah, this was fun. It was. Uh, we're gonna have to do this again because we we barely scratched the surface on every. You didn't tell me the real stories, <laughs> right? We just scratched. We just bounced around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I skirted. I skirted. Uh, I skirted the, the yeah the real stories. But so, yeah. I want you to make a, a, a vow. You're gonna come fly with me at least thirty to forty minutes before we do the next podcast, and we'll talk about your free fly progression. Okay. You got to do it, man. I'm I there. Know I do. We're here. You've got me. I know. I know. I'm yours. All Use right. me. I will. All right. Love you, Joe. Love you too, brother. Yo, Wazzy Circus Radio. Thank you, guys. Uh, learn to skydive. It could change your life and save mine. See you guys next week or whenever the fuck you watch the next show. Later. Yeah. Track